agriculture in North Carolina is the biggest industry in the state. The, uh, the research service is made up of 18 stations from the, from the coast all the way to the western border of North Carolina. And if we're gonna keep up with the increasing population, you know, the food supply is gonna to have to increase as well. So, and agriculture research is the key to increasing that food supply to meet the, the population demand. So our mission is to, to provide safe food, to keep food productive, to keep it profitable for farmers. So this station is the highest elevation research station in North Carolina. The, some of the other stations can do a lot of drought tolerance. We can do cold tolerance. We can do high altitude stuff. We've done some work with strawberries before. So we have, today we have 32 active research projects on roughly 18 different commodities. And we work with 23 different researchers most of which work for NC State and the USDA. So this station was established in 1944 and my grandfather was the first permanent employee that was ever hired here. So he was the first person to retire from this station. So this station's been in my, my family for decades. I worked here when I was in high school. I was I was seasonal help working through the summers and got on permanent in 2006 and have been here ever since. I started in 2006, I was promoted to superintendent in 2013. Ash County is one of the largest and some will tell you the largest Christmas tree producing county in the United States. So we do a lot of work with Christmas trees. Some of what we saw was part of the Christmas tree genetics program at NC State. We have uh, the trees that we were shearing today have been part of some ground cover studies. They've been part of some fertilization studies, some insect control, and those trees are mature enough now. We'll harvest half of those trees this year and they'll be used for post-harvest quality research. And next year we'll harvest the the remaining trees in that field for post-harvest quality. This is one of two stations in North Carolina that do research on burley tobacco. That's done here and it's done at Waynesville. Now, the other stations do a lot of work with fluke-cured tobacco, but most of the burley is trending west, so the research has trended west with it as well. A lot of our tobacco is, is part of the breeding program, so it's not commercially available yet. All of that tobacco has to be destroyed. Some of it is commercially available that's part of other research programs that we can sell. Part of our budget structure is made up of receipt money from commodities that we sell off of the stations. So we're not 100% taxpayer funded. The butternut squash, this is probably our fourth year in that program, looking at a lot of the physiology of that fruit. Post-harvest, chemistry of that fruit, yield, fertilization. There's a lot of different studies wrapped up into one there. And butternut squash are really healthy for people to eat. Part of what the program looks at is when plants are grown under stress, the fruit that they produce can be more nutritious for humans because the plant's trying to protect that fruit. So the chemistry of it is a little more nutritious. So they're comparing the the chemistry, you know, maybe the vitamin A content of the fruit grown up here to fruit grown on other stations that may be hotter or more drought or whatever the conditions may be. We do a lot of work with turf grass. The objective there is to breed a cold tolerant warm season turf grass. Warm season grasses, it gets cold enough in parts of North Carolina to where there's some winter kill. So the objective is to breed a cold tolerant warm season grass. The cottonwoods and hybrid poplars are part of the bioenergy research initiative in North Carolina. And the ultimate goal would be to have a processing plant somewhere in Western North Carolina. So there's, there's not currently a processing plant for that material, but there's 
there's not currently a sustainable supply of that material to make it feasible to build that plant. So, so the question now is kind of, you know, the chicken or the egg, which comes first? Do you build a plant and then establish that uh, supply of materials or do you establish the supply of materials and hope somebody builds a plant? This is their third growing season. So at the end of this season, we'll complete three growing cycles. And those trees are probably 25 feet tall now, roughly. So it's just a fast growing, biomass producing tree. They found hydrilla in some of the canals that feed New York with drinking water. And hydrilla is not native to New York, so it's a new problem for them. There was some grant money made available by the federal government to help them with the weed problem. The grant money was subbed out to the Army Corps of Engineers who then subbed it out to NC State. The reason it came to NC State is because NC State has a researcher, and there's not many of those researchers in the U.S., but NC State has a researcher, and the climate here at Upper Mountain is similar to the climate in Albany, New York. So we've got the, the researcher and the facilities that are appropriate to do that research. And the, the ultimate goal, you know, is to help New York provide their citizens with a continued supply of fresh, clean drinking water. Our beef program is one of the programs that's really changed over the last few years. Historically, each station had a herd of animals and we supplied our own animals for research. Now the program is moving to where there's just one herd for the entire research service. So the NC beef system is made up of seven stations across the state and the animals come here certain times of the year. We do a lot of breeding work here just because of the cooler climate and the animals are more receptive to breeding and we have a lot of forages. These forages in the Blue Ridge Mountains are the best forages in the state of North Carolina. So the animals come up here and they enjoy the cooler temperatures and the good forages and, and we take care of the breeding. And in the, when the beef system is complete, we will have a five to 700 animal herd. And it'll be similar genetics and we can provide our own animals for research on any station across the state and the animals will be genetically similar. They'll be the same, you know, physically and genetically for research. It's a job a lot of people dream of. I mean, not, not everybody can, can get up and have a, a 460 acre office and be outside all day doing what we do. So everybody that works here is fortunate to have the jobs we have. We've got a lot of support from the community. We've got a lot of support from state government right now. So, uh, so it's, a, it's a unique job and we're, we're proud to serve the citizens of North Carolina in the capacity that we can.